Hi everyone, so today I want to share with you one of my latest development, which is actually a math library for Maya. You might wonder, why do we actually need a math library for Maya? There are many around, so what's different on this one? Okay, let me explain really quick what it does and actually why I wanted to make one. So Maya comes with um, a math library already, okay, which is available in the Open Maya uh, Python module. The problem with that is that so many riggers actually don't even know that those API are available. So they never use it. They are not confident. They are scared. Like, oh my God, my API! No, I'm not able to use them. I cannot learn them. And so they don't even know it exists. Or if they do, they don't use it. Not everyone, but many many riggers I know is like that. Uh, we cannot use PyMail, or it's not like we cannot, but I, I'm a big fan of PyMail, but many times in different studio they, they didn't want to rely on PyMail, they just wanted to stick with regular Maya commands. So basically I had to create one from scratch. Uh, I did that many times. I created many times vector operation, but then I lost it, or there were different constraints. Uh, so basically I find myself writing over and over and over the same things for pure math computation and sometimes when I have to do with nodes it's even worse because it's really tedious there are few nodes so you need a lot of them to do your operation it's a lot of wiring so your code gets long and boring hard to read and everything so I said okay that's enough I want to make a library that is easy to use for both pure math operation and for both um, node operation, okay? So that's the main difference. So this library is basically composed of two main branch. The first one is the pure math one. That is really useful when you need to build something, okay? For example, you're building guides for a rig and you need to set up stuff in a specific way. Are you actually building a rig? You know, so I need to position stuff in a particular way. I found myself doing vector operation all the time. Or matrix operation, building a matrix from three vectors and stuff. And or, or the, on the other side, there is a, a node API which mirror 90% what the vector API, regular vector API does. And you will see later that there are really few differences and why that's useful. So basically you can use the node one for actually building uh, the rig, so the stuff they actually need to run live, okay? And actually let, let me give you an example, okay? So for example, what I want to achieve here is a vector perpendicular to two given vectors, okay? In this case I, we have a red vector, which is vector A, and a green vector, which is vector B. And this locator is represent a perpendicular vector from the base of the vectors to this locator. So you see, if I move the vectors around, that vector always stays perpendicular, okay? And we also have an extra vector here scaling the result, okay? So if we go check the result in those node editor, You will see, it's quite a bit of node. Let me just remove all this stuff we don't need to see. It's all the annotation to make easier for you guys to understand. That's the main stuff. It's quite a bit of node of wiring. Okay, just for really simple operation, we basically find a, out of three points a perpendicular vector, like extract two vectors and make a perpendicular one. So this is all, all the operation we need to do, okay? And I will show you how with this library, this is really, really easy to do. Okay, let's see if I can make this stuff smaller so we can actually see that. Okay, something like that. Let me shrink this up like that. There we go. So, the main thing we want to do is, of course, import the module. So I'm appending a path and importing the n-vector class, okay? 
So n vector class stands for node vector. Okay, so this is the vector class which works with Maya nodes. Okay, so here we initialize uh, a couple of vectors. Okay, so in this case, I'm initializing one vector for each point we have. So we have the base, which is this one. So this bad guy here, this is the base. So the only need, things we need to do is to pass the name of the object and the attribute, which actually is the vector which it represents. So in this case, for position represent a vector from this point, sorry, from the origin to this point. And then just test, this test is just for the names that the, the object is going to create. Okay, it's, it's used for a generator. I'm going into that in another video, don't worry about that. So I do the same for vector A, vector B, which are those two objects, and they're also scalar vector, which is this object which we use for scale, okay? For scaling this resulting vector. So I make an instance, you see these ones are n vector objects, this was is an n scalar object, which is basically just a vector of length one, of size one, basically one element, okay? So now, if I want to find the vector from the base to the tip A, it's just a matter of subtracting two vectors. And I can just do vector A minus vector base, okay? The class support this operation, and you will see that automatically for us, he made the subtraction of the two vectors, and it gives us back another vector, okay? Which in this case, point to the output attribute here. So I can do the same for vector 2, and we get another vector. Now, since I have two vectors to find a perpendicular one, I need to do a cross product, and there is an operator for that. So in this case, I just run like that, and we get the cross product of the two. Then I want to normalize the result, so it's not like really long and whatever. So here we have another operation to normalize, just call normalize on the result. And then I just want to scale the vector dynamically by an, a scalar. So I call the method scalar dynamic and I pass the scalar we instantiated before. So don't worry if you don't understand everything, this is just a quick demo, everything is heavily documented, I spend a lot of time in the documentation, so feel free to check that. And then once I scale the vector, I'm going to connect this vector, so the result, uh, to sum that, sorry, to the base, so at this point. So I'm just going to do a vector addition, so if I run that, we see it creates two nodes, the first one is the scaling operation, so you see is is tagged as scalar dynamic, and then we have the sum. Then the last things I want to do is connect the final vector to our target locator, which is this one. Okay? So I do that, we get the connection, and here we go. We got our vector here. And if we move this, the vector is going to scale up and down. Okay? So you see, really few lines of codes, we were able to set it up that really quickly, and you see that it's really intuitive to do so, because it's just really like regular math operation that you will do with regular vectors, okay? And I can go even further, I can show you that I can do the same exact things with the regular vectors, okay? So let me do that. There we go. So I have the code here. So if you see, uh, the initialization is just a bit different because uh, working with a regular math vector, you don't have attributes, you just have values. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to get the word position and store in the value. Okay? I'm going to do that for all the three points and as well for the scalar. Okay? And you will see that the values are just tuples or lists. Okay? And then I can instantiate a vector class, a regular vector class, which actually, as a, as a constructor, takes inputs as a, a list or, um, or a tuple. So I initialize the three vector again, vector base, vector A, and vector B. 
and then the operation are exactly the same. To generate vector 1 is vector A minus vector base. Vector 2 is the same, vector B minus vector B. Cross product operation is exactly the same, normalizing is exactly the same, and computing the final one is exactly the same. You see? So the only difference is the initialization. Okay, the result is exactly the same. So if I put all that together, so I put all the, the two scripts together, one on top, one after each other, and I'm printing the result, so the final vector we actually get. So the first part here is the regular node one, and I'm using the method as list, where basically extract the values of the node as a list, and I do the same with pure vector math, and I print the result as a list again. Okay, so if I run that both, we see we get exactly the same result. There is just a small rounding error in the, the low decimal part, but that's just about how all the rounds that happen inside the nodes and stuff. But you see that overall the result is the same. We are the same exact result up to the sixth uh, number after uh, in the decimal point, sorry. So you see uh, what's the gain of this library. So first of all you can speed up a lot your code and passing from the node based library to the regular mm, math one is actually trivial. It's really really simple. Okay. So this was, a, was the first demo. Uh, I'm going to do other demos for now. So like I'm going to do more rigging specific demos. For example how to quickly create a stretch IK using the library and then a more advanced and uh, sorry advanced stretchy uh, IK okay so that's it for now guys bye bye